Y'all weather is beautiful though, it's so perfect. I don't know how y'all don't go crazy. Well, y'all do go crazy. <laughs> but it's so perfect all the time. I, 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 I realized I love this weather when I went home recently and was watching a football game with some of my homies and I realized that there's no manly way to ask for a blanket. It's no manly way to tell your thug friend your toes cold, brother. <laughs> Furthermore, through hands-on research, there's no manly way to be the only man in a room full of men under a blanket and comfortable. It's... <laughs> you like meeting new people? What's up, dog? Name's Chris. <laughs> it's 300 count, nigga. This is nice. white people. <laughs> I do, I just love white people. I know you don't come and get up here and talk about they don't like, well, I love white people. Y'all are awesome. <laughs> Y'all jump off of mountains without parachutes. <laughs> Y'all take ecstasy. Y'all are the bomb. <laughs> Y'all keep messing with animals, no matter how many of y'all get killed, y'all still keep going after it, boy. <laughs> I was watching the news uh, the other day and the newscaster was like, if you see a mountain lion, do not approach it. I was like, who is this commercial for? This, this is for white folks. This, this, black people don't mess with animals. We cross the street when we see a squirrel. <laughs> See the look in Alvin's face. <laughs> Even the mountain lion be like, is, is this bitch approaching me? <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> y'all be hiking and riding your bike all in the mountains and surprise when a mountain lion jump out and maul your punk ass. <laughs> He came from the mountains. <laughs> it's a mountain lion. It's, it's not a kitchen lion. It's not a bathroom lion. I'm trying to figure out why, why does my lunch have a backpack on? Why? Crazy white woman got killed by her own python. I ain't even got no punchline for that because it's ridiculous. <laughs> How do you raise your own murderer? How do you do that? How do you, how do you go to a cage with a python in it and go, coochie, coochie, coo, python? That python was like, soon, bitch. We've been friends for a long time. We work together in SNL. He is the Hans from Hans and Franz. Ladies and gentlemen, Dana Carvey. Basically, what I did was I played the Trump Casino in Atlantic City. Corporate date. They had all the high rollers there, like a thousand of them in a room. Yeah. And I thought he was going to introduce me, but he was just on a speaker from New York. Oh, nice. <laughs> so I'm standing on stage. Now, the speaker, suddenly it's Donald Trump's voice, and you could see the salesman. Now we're going to provide you some of the outstanding entertainment from Saturday Night Live. Does all these amazing characters. He went on and on and on about me, and then I bombed. <laughs> Don't get, see, I look young. I look your age, but I'm not your age. I'm old. I fool myself. I'd be in the mirror like, oh shit, you about to kill him. Mmm, you looking good, finesse, baby. Ooh, ooh. But then I take a couple of steps and I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with my knee? This was a good knee last year. And my shoulder hurt, it's gonna rain, god damn. My daddy knew when it was gonna rain, my granddaddy knew. Now I got that power. You don't know what 40 and older go through. What's your name? Say, Robert, let me, let me tell you what I'm doing. I go to the bathroom, I pee, I know how to pee. I've been peeing for 42 years. I shake, I'm done, I zip up, I take a couple of steps. I pee just a little bit more. I'm like, fuck, fuck, I was done. I'm wearing boxer shorts, I got on my socks, fuck. That shit never happened last year. I gotta walk back in the Red Lobster with pee-pee stains on my drawers. <laughs> Shit changed our whole week. What else is happening with you now that you're getting older? 
Well, I'm, my I'm, wife and I uh, had a baby, and uh, it was. Nice. Are you? Yeah, that's right. We're you had a baby. Around. We have a little baby girl, which was our second choice, and it's very cute. <laughs> 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 I was happy. My wife was less happy, but um, she's younger than me. You know, she still wants to do things. You know, <laughs> leave the house. You know, have she, friends. <laughs> no, she said she, she got me glasses. I was so I didn't think I was going to need glasses, and she said, "You're doing this all the time, huh?" <laughs> <laughs> Listen a lot of classic music. I like like old Judy Garland, you know, when she was older when she sang. Because at that point in her life, she sounded like she was in a car off roading. That's why I like her. Somewhere over the rainbow. Be careful, Judy! Don't blow up the truck. <laughs> I don't like too many singers today. You know, Christina Aguilera, just shut up. Just shut that mouth. <laughs> this overdoes it, you know, the oh, 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 like too much of her songs that we forget what song she's singing. <laughs> she sang the Star Spangled Banner live, you know, and I felt bad for the crowd because they're like, oh, let's sing along. <laughs> oh, say can you, no, you can't sing along to that anthem. Oh, say can you sing? in kindergarten class, you know, when they're learning the alphabet. <laughs> now class together, A, B, C. <laughs> Who is that? <laughs> That's just one letter. Oh, God, we're going to be here all day. I always wanted to be a thug, man. I had a family full of thugs. I used to try to chase them around all the time. But they never fully accepted me because I spent half my life in the suburbs. And it's not gangster when they're having a gang meeting in the city and you have to commute to the hood, that's not a gangster thing to do. I'll be late for all the gang meetings, like, where you at, dog? In traffic, nigga, it's crazy. I stopped for a latte and shit got real. <laughs> if y'all gonna do that drive-by, take the streets, dog. It's crazy. And I smile too much, man. I'm probably gonna die like this, you know? <laughs> I'm just saying, if white people can walk up to you on the street and ask you for directions randomly, your thug level's not where it needs to be. <laughs> I'm like, yo, stick them up. Like, how do I get to Kawanga? Uh, take this gun, take a left. People are crazy, watch your step. <laughs> I'm having a good day. Where's the church? Where is the church? <laughs> can we treat it more playfully, like a newsreel from the 1930s? And news out of Hollywood today, Olympic gold medalist Bruce Jenner has announced that he is becoming a she. And guess what? She's gorgeous. <laughs> In other news, movie star Clark Gable has announced that he also is transitioning. He'll soon be known as Kathy Gable, and he'd like to start in a sequel to Gone with the Wind where he plays Scarlett O'Hara. And quite frankly, we do give a damn. Another angle, well, another there was way a, to get there into was a, it. There was an article. Ew. Another way to get into it. You're disgusting. There was an article on, yes. a, on a Yahoo goes, can, oh no, USA Today goes, can, you, can comedians make fun of transgenders? They're asking that. And then they have transgenders going, yes, as long as you don't mention the sexual parts. <laughs> I'm like, well, that's the whole thing. I think everybody has a sense of humor, including transgender people. You can make fun of me. I don't care. All right. Straight, heterosexual man. It's hilarious. Well, Dana, well, okay, but Dana, come on. <laughs> His name's Dana. Well, if I do transition, I don't have to change my name. If, exactly. That's an advantage. Don't believe me. I've thought of that. John, do you have faith in God as a Jew? Uh, yeah, I do. I believe God is a Jew because his son was Jewish. Well, and uh, not to be competitive, but my God is your God's dad. <laughs> Alcohol is not a new problem for me. 
It has been dogging me for like a decade now. And this, this illustrates it. When I was 20 years old, I blacked out drinking and I fell asleep in my own bed, which should be a safe zone. It wasn't this evening, okay? So my roommates broke into my room and shoved a stick of butter down my pants. That's weird as fuck. That's very weird. That's a weird thing to do. And throughout the night, it melted and congealed. And when you wake up in the morning with no idea of what happened the night before, and you see that, you don't think, is that melted congealed butter? <laughs> That's not the thought. The thought is, no! <laughs> what did you do to yourself? You gotta start taking it easier at night. <laughs> no, and I did what any of us would do upon finding that. Uh, I told nobody about it. <laughs> I didn't say a word. And since I didn't tell anybody about it, my roommates were drunk when they did it to me. They didn't bring it up to me. So no one said anything. And I spent eight months of my life convinced that I had the rarest STD on the planet. Positive. Because after I got out of the shower, like I would take a shower right away, and it, also, I realized that day that you can turn a stand-up only shower into a sit-down shower if you're sad enough. Like, you can do it, you know? Because that's where you can hug your whole body. Just really tell yourself you're not a bad person. Like, you, your mom loves you. You know that. Your dad might not, but your mom... I got out of that shame shower and I was like, find out what you have. Look it up on the internet. Google, creamy discharge around the pelvis. <laughs> oh, that's not a thing? <laughs> it doesn't exist on the internet? Okay. I'm the first one with this? Great. Patient zero for new AIDS? Awesome. <laughs> Spent eight months thinking I had new AIDS. Every morning waking up being like, is it back today? <laughs> I found out what happened eight months later, eight months when another friend had passed out at her house and my roommates are like, let's put some butter down his pants. <laughs> and I'm like in the kitchen like, what did you say you're gonna do? What, did, what are you gonna put, what are you gonna, what are you gonna do to him? You're gonna, what? And they're like, we'll put butter down his pants. And I'm like, have you done that to before maybe to somebody in the house? Has that happened before? Has this happened before to somebody maybe? Has that happened? And they're like, we did it to you, man, a while back. And I'm just like, August 16th, 2006. Is that the date? Is it? Because I got that marked out of my calendar, gang, as the day I contracted new AIDS. <laughs> Fuck you, man! This is exciting, man, because I quit my job at the grocery store! Oh my gosh. I was working at this grocery store. I hated it. Hated it. Why is it when you hate your job, they won't fire you? <laughs> It was the worst neighborhood, man. It was so hood, and I hated my manager because he's like, listen, Mike, if people are stealing, I need you to do something. I'm like, Psh, do something? I live around here. I know these folks. <laughs> What's gonna happen if I apprehend William? He like, half of this shit for you, dawg. <laughs> I know William, struggle with me, then run off. William got away. <laughs> I'm broke as shit. I just applied for a job at Taco Bell. Has anyone ever seen the job application at Taco Bell? What asshole is writing the questions on this application? <laughs> Question number three, and I quote, how did you hear about Taco Bell? <laughs> What 
the fuck? How did I hear about Taco Bell? I live on Earth. You piece of shit. It's not the Illuminati. I walked here from my house. How do you think I heard of Taco Bell? I googled diarrhea and your name came up. They ask if you're currently employed. Uh, let's go with no. Let's check the no box there, Einstein. Who's leaving their current job to work at Taco Bell? What piece of shit job do you have? Right now I work at Del Taco, but I'm trying to take it up a notch in the taco game play. <laughs> I know, I actually tried cocktail serving once for seven and a half years. And I, didn't, I didn't love it, because um, cause people get a little self-unaware when they drink. You know, when I was working in the bar, people, drunk people were always asking me for drink recommendations. Like, what should I drink? <laughs> what shots should I take? What should I drink, drink? I'm like, why are you melting? <laughs> you sound like Rihanna. <laughs> what should I drink, 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 drink? Tell me what to drink, drink. <laughs> like, you don't need a drink at all anymore. You need to go home and record an album. <laughs> this sounds amazing. One of my biggest pet peeves as a server is when people would flag me over but then they weren't ready to order. You guys. I'd be like, excuse me, can we get some service over here? Hello? And then I'd go over there, I'm like, yeah, because I was a professional. <laughs> and they're like, we don't know what to get. What do you think we should get? We didn't, we didn't look at what to get. I'm like, have you tried the fuck out? <laughs> It's really good this time of now. Get out. <laughs> we had like a lot of celebrities come in the bar that I worked in. Uh, I worked in a hotel. And Suge Knight was one of our regulars. Uh, yeah, it was fun. And uh, he, do you guys know who Suge Knight is? Clap if you know who Suge Knight is. <laughs> he didn't clap. Don't respond. I'm kidding. Okay. <laughs> He's like this big gangster like, record producer guy. I don't know what he does. He just wears red shirts. Um, but he'd always come in the bar and like ask for stuff that we didn't have. Like I think he was just always looking for an excuse to like hang someone over the balcony. You know what I mean? <laughs> so he'd be like, I want some mac and cheese. I'm like, we don't have mac and cheese, Shug. He's like, okay. I want a root beer float. <laughs> I'm like, well, I don't want Tupac to be alive. We can always get what we want. I, uh, I just got fired from Trader Joe's. <laughs> I farted on my manager, and I filmed it and put it on Instagram. And uh, you're not supposed to do that. <laughs> Yeah, dude, I clocked in, I just drank coffee, you know, and I had one brewing, I had it in the chamber. And I seen a manager that had it coming, you know? And I was like, this will make a good Insta story. And then I started filming, and I go up and look at on my Instagram, you think I'm bullshitting, it's like five posts to go, you know? And I say uh, to my manager, hey, what's up, fart ass? And then I farted on him. You can hear it good, too. I'm half Mexican. <laughs> and then I, I look at him, I go, what are you gonna do, manager, man? What are you gonna write me up? And then they fired me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. That just happened. And then I filed for unemployment, and uh, they ha have a phone interview with an unemployment agent, and he's trying to get information out of me. And he's like, what'd you get fired for? And I was like, oh, you know, some stuff, yeah. <laughs> and I've been arrested before. I know you say nothing, you know? And then uh, he's trying to get the reason out of me. And, and, uh, and he tells me, the more information you give me, the more I'll be able to help you. I'm like, yeah, all right, buddy. I don't fucking trust you, dude. But then he said, I'm going to find out from your employer what really happened. And I was like, oh shit, I better tell him then. You know, there's two sides to every fart. He's gotta hear mine. 
And then I was like, you know, I was just filming on uh, social media and, uh, and a little, little fart <laughs> slipped out, you know? You can't prove that I pushed, you know? <laughs> and then he starts laughing. He goes, oh, what? <laughs> and then I was like, I better sound smart right here. And I was like, yeah, you know, like flatulence. <laughs> And then he really started laughing. And he said, that's all the information I need. And he hung up. <laughs> and I was like, oh man, I'm not gonna get it. And then a week later, I got a letter in the mail and I didn't get it. <laughs> oh, fuck. To work in customer service, you have to have a certain level of tolerance for anger and aggravation. And white people, y'all are built to deal with anger and aggravation. Not niggas, mm -mm. I don't care how bad shit is going with a white customer service rep. They like hostage negotiators. I don't give a fuck how mad you get. They will talk you down. They will, sir, and I understand, and forgive me, you to death. Sir, what's the problem? My motherfucking PlayStation ain't working and I can't play online. I'm pissed the fuck off. Sir, sir, sir. What's your name? Bokeem. Oh, that's a great name. Whatever the problem is, sir, please believe we will get through this. What game are you trying to play? Fucking Madden football. I love football. What's your favorite team? The Giants. I love the Broncos. Go Giants. <laughs> By the time they fix that shit, you be fucking apologizing. Look, man, I ain't mean to curse you out. Just going through a lot of shit, you know what I mean? My fucking wife is leaving me. My kids ain't shit. I'm sorry. It's okay, sir. My name is Chad. If ever you need help again, my extension is 487. And go Broncos. Black people, fucking, it's a fucking standoff. Fuck wrong with shit. Motherfucker, I'm trying to figure it out. Nigga, you ain't got to talk to me like that. Man, fuck you. Who the fuck is you? Nigga, you ain't shit. Suck my dick. Your mama ain't shit. Bitch. Nigga, what the fuck? <laughs> I used to work at McDonald's when I graduated from high school. McDonald's cool. White women used to tip me when they come through. They used to make noises and shit when they order. I'd be like, hey, walk in McDonald's. I'd be like, yes, let me get a... I'd be like, bitch, is you a DJ or something? Because whatever, ain't on the menu. It ain't on the menu, girl. Then they ask questions. How's the salad? It's green. I don't know. <laughs> Can't afford no salad. <laughs> Work on the dollar menu. And Mexicans come through the drive-thru and they be ordering and asking questions at the same time. But they really ordering. Like, hey, welcome to McDonald's. Jose be like, oh, okay, um, um, maybe two McChicken. <laughs> maybe Happy Meal for Boy, maybe, maybe Boy. You don't know what you created, Jose? You don't know? And then black, old, older black women, they come through and order crazy coffees. Old black ladies come through all the time. Too. Yeah, baby, let me get this hands to the coffee with the, with, the, with the 50 cream and the, and the 50 sugar. And, and let me get three drops of ice. I'm like, you sure you don't want no chocolate milk? Because you just created a chocolate milk. Damn. How you know my name? Bitch, come in every day. <laughs> I go to Starbucks a lot, nothing special about Starbucks, but I hang out there a lot. And I've realized in doing that, I think having any job, or any kind of job interview at Starbucks, that's got to be the most depressing thing on the planet. Because Starbucks is a rude company. They don't do their job interviews in the back office like every other company in the world. No, they don't do that. They do their job interviews right in the middle of the cafe, 2 p.m. So everyone can see the crushing defeat and failure that's going on at that moment. And like you feel bad for them because you know Starbucks wasn't their first choice. It wasn't their 15th choice. It's their only choice. It's Starbucks, you know? You know they're getting asked condescending questions, like not on purpose. Just like, so, do you have any uh, leadership skills? No, I don't. I'm applying at Starbucks. Not sure if you saw that. Uh, I'm a college graduate, and I'm here. Life ain't happening. You know? All right, well, then, uh, what are your long-term goals? To not work here. Uh, <laughs> I want to go home right now. This is dumb. 
And then if you get the job, you got to serve Starbucks customers, of which 95% are animals. You know, because you get some bitchy lady who's like, I asked for extra foam with my latte. It's like, yeah, well, I asked for a reasonable job and a respectable salary. Uh, <laughs> after I spent $80,000 on an English degree, so you can go screw yourself, all right? Regular will be fine. <laughs> if you're a guy and you go to Starbucks, get a small black coffee and leave, all right? Some of the stuff I see you order, it's embarrassing as a male myself. <laughs> like dudes walking in being like, I'll have a Java chip mocha. No, you won't. <laughs> no, you won't. Because a Java chip mocha comes with a tampon and a vagina. All right? Before I started working in the dispensaries, I've pretty much gotten fired from every single job that I've worked here. I know, shocking, right? Um, it's not me, it's Los Angeles. Um, like, I've been fired from like serving jobs, bartending jobs, account managing jobs. Uh, someone let me be a substitute teacher. <laughs> Want to know what job I haven't been fired from? Blow job. <laughs> I quit. <laughs> but I've never been fired. My dad loves that joke. I was there 10.75 years, man. You guys got real depressed right there, huh? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I got hired for seasonal work and I stayed over a decade. That's the true tragedy right there, man. Fuck. You guys ever been at a job so long you just make noises at it, you know? I was ringing up this one lady and I just was like, ha. <laughs> And I didn't know that I did that, you know? And then she was like, what was that? And I was like, oh shit, I did that. And I was honest with her and I told her that was a little bit of my soul dying. <laughs> One scan of organic broccoli at a time. You can feel it, you know? I was like, dude. It's fucking gone, man. And I would do awesome shows like this, you know, at the world famous Laugh Factory. And sometimes I'll uh, open up for famous fucks on the road. And I'll do theater gigs with thousands of people. And then I would wake up and go work at Trader Joe's. You know? That's some high high and some low lows right there. I would literally do a theater gig, then they'll go clock in and they'll be like, Craig, you need to go clean the toilet. And then I would. <laughs> you guys ever do a theater gig and wake up to a turd in the toilet? I was just looking at it. I was like, I was a goddamn rock star last night. <laughs> this is bullshit, man. He doesn't talk back. And then sometimes I would get recognized and they would, people I'd ring up would be like, hey, dude, I, I saw you out the Wilter New Year's Eve. You fucking killed it, man. And then they would be like, you really do work at Trader Joe's. <laughs> <laughs> and then a sadness would come over them. You know when you're checking into a hotel, you ever wonder, what in the fuck are they typing on the computer that's taking so long? <laughs> you have my reservation. But you know I'm coming. What's going on here? You give them your name and they're back there... When you check people in, is it F6? I <laughs> think you look good. Let's talk at lunch. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> What's your last name, sir? <laughs> it's like, are you realigning a satellite back there? <laughs> Do you ever have a noise come out of your body you never heard before? Like, it's always somewhere quiet, like a bank. Like, you're online, and you know what your stomach sounds like, and you know what your ass sounds like. But sometimes this area is a What the fuck was that? Did you hear that? Maybe that chicken sandwich wasn't dead. <laughs> I heard some come out of me over here, like a I got it. I'm gonna shit an owl. And you can feel the movement. He's trying to get out. 
I always wanted to fill my asshole with confetti. <laughs> so this way, when I farted, I was like, a <laughs> what the fuck? Who was that magical man? Everybody farts. Man, this country is divided now. But no matter, no matter your race, age, gender, political affiliation, religion, handicap, sexual orientation, we all fart. Everybody in this room farts. Somebody is farting in here right now. Besides me, I mean, somebody else is farting. I do bet you, somewhere in this room, there's a woman in here who's had to fart for at least 15 minutes. She knows if she lets it out, she's splitting the bill for the drinks. I admire that. A woman's got a fart, she holds it inside. She's with people, that's fucking amazing. I can't imagine living that kind of lifestyle. I've been letting them go as they come my whole life. Fart shows up, fart goes out, like, like that. Can you imagine living that way, guys? Guys, imagine all the farts you've ever had. Since you were 15, and holding them in your whole fucking life. That's why women are crazy, you know? Holding the farts for 30 years is like, eats away the brains. They wait till they get home, they stand out in the yard at 4 a.m. like, Hurr. And all the grass around them dies. Those crop suckers aren't aliens, it's the farmer's wife. I fart a lot after sex. I think it's because my muscles won't do any more work. My the ass cheeks won't clench and stop the music. So they just kind of fall out of me like... Too late, you already fucked me, so... It's your fault, have some standards next time. <laughs> I've been here for four days and I have farted on that elevator at least 37 times. Last time, they all knew it was me. They all knew, at the same time, I was like, that fat guy just farted. Everybody thinks the fat guy is the guy who farted. So if you got a fart, just fart near a fat guy and be like, what the fuck? Him and his chicken nuggets. It's not fucking fair. So I packed the elevator, bent over to tie my shoe, it's like a gunshot. So, fuck. Hi, how you doing, hi. Can you press 34, please? <laughs> nothing to fucking say. There's nothing to say after you fart. You burp, you go, oh, excuse me, fart, no. Excuse me doesn't fucking cover it. Yeah, excuse you. Like, there should be something to say by now, like, may God have mercy on us all. Thank you. Could you cover your ass, please? I don't want my kids to get sick. That's <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> That's a lot of fart jokes. Because usually when you date a girl, she's chill till you fuck her. Oh, it's happened to you recently. He's like, I just got rid of a clinger. I can help you. I can save you, okay? This is going to save a life because I finally figured it out. It took me five years. Fuck jokes. This is like a PSA, okay? Because a lot of guys think it's the sex. They think it's your, like, dick. Because you'll go out with your friends and we start sending you 40, 50 texts. Whatever. Don't count. And you guys are like, I don't know. I fucked her once. Now she won't stop texting me. I think I dignitized her. <laughs> Dicked her down so good. I'm telling you guys, it's not the dick. Good dick is great, but it's the after dick. It's the cuddling. A lot of you guys fake cuddle. Like we fake orgasms, you fucks fake cuddle. Knock that shit off. It's fucking up our heads, okay? Why do bitches go crazy? Because you hold us all night, then we blow up your phone and you don't answer. If we blow up your car, that's on you. <laughs> Sorry. We don't want to, right? No girl wants to. No one's like, I want to ruin a guy's life. No. But we catch feelings when you cuddle us. We can't help it. And so you guys know I'm not mad at you. The guys look scared. <laughs> It's not your fault. I used to think it was your fault. It's not. You know why they don't feel what we feel? Because they're asleep. <laughs> That's the truth. They come, their dick and brain explode together. It's just <laughs> <laughs> brain dead. It's true. Only reason they wake up is if they get horny again, like their dick wakes them back up somehow. 
Otherwise, they're knocked out. But guys, just so you know, women don't sleep. Not really, not for months. Every girl here knows the beginning is when we trick you guys into thinking we're perfect. So we can't fart, we can't drool. I won't let my face touch the pillow. I'm like, he can't know I wear makeup. Ah. <laughs> like, I will walk to McDonald's to shit for a year. <laughs> Every girl will leave your house. No one shits in your house. Think about it. You've never seen a girl shit in your house the first year. No, we leave. And then you guys think we're so sweet. You're like, oh my God, this one brings me coffee every morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have to. It's true. You can't come back with nothing, right? <laughs> what are we gonna tell you? Sorry, went to Chevron, had to shit. <laughs> no. It's bad. Like, ladies, men, lovers, it's 2029 or whatever year you want to identify as. Like, if someone wants to leave after sex, like, it might not be you. It might be that that person has to fart, like, very badly. And, and they don't know you very well. Like, th this girl was like, why are you trying to leave? Do you want to stay and cuddle for a little bit? And I was like, yeah, I'm a golden retriever of a human being. Like, I would never re refuse a cuddle. Dibs little spoon, let's do this thing. <laughs> don't laugh, I love to be held, you know? Like, so I got in there, snuggled right in his little spoon, and I, had to, I realized I had to fart immediately. Uh, and I don't know if you guys know, like, the geometry of little spoon, but, like, I couldn't even, like, sneak it, you know? I couldn't, I couldn't like, fart and be like, my feet smell bad, I don't know. Like, like, I couldn't do that, you know? Like, she would, like, I had to, the pressure was on, like, pun, pun intended, you know? Like, so, like, for an hour and a half, and that's how long I lasted, I, like, I just, like, I just, like, held in a fart, you know? Like, you guys, we've all done that before. Like, where you, like, let the gas, like, build all the way to, like, the precipice of your, of your sphincter, and then you, like, and then you suck it up your butt tube again. You guys know that one? If you're, if you're not laughing, you're a fucking liar. Uh, we can all do the old butt suck and push guns a shot. Like, I'm a scientist. We're all designed the same, you know? Like, so for like an hour and a half, I was just doing like flawless butt sucks. Like, I, like just like, uh, like that was the noise, I'm sure. I, I have a strong, noble sphincter. Like it didn't, it didn't betray me once, you know? I found out last weekend, the hardest thing for me to do is take a shit at a house party. Cause if you're at a house party, everybody accounted for, they know who fucked that bathroom up. Only way you can take a shit at a house party is if you go in the bathroom, lock the door, shit, climb out the window and then go back around into the party. <laughs> And help people figure out who the fuck is in that bathroom. <laughs> you standing in the crowd like I think he or she climbed out the window. <laughs> I'm at the party, my stomach fucked up. I'm doing that thing where you hold your drink and bob your head. Ain't no music playing. You just trying to figure out what you're gonna do with your stomach. <laughs> but you can't focus because your stomach like uh, 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 uh. shut the fuck up. Shit. It got to the point I couldn't hold it. I went to my guy. It was his house. I said, Hey man, I got um, I got shit in your bathroom. He was like, I got you. I was like, you got me? And he shook my hand with the drug handshake. Y'all know the drug handshake, right? When you pull your hand back, it's either money or drugs in your hand. I pulled my hand back, it's just a little visine size bottle. And it said, poopery. Anybody ever heard of this shit? Yeah. All the shitty booty people know what I'm talking about in the crowd, right? I never heard of this shit. I read the instructions, apparently you put poopery in the toilet, this shit creates a force field <laughs> above the atmosphere of the toilet and stops the smell from getting out. I don't know the science behind the shit. I'm desperate, I'll try anything. I put the drops in the toilet, I sit down, I start shit. Three minutes go by, and I don't smell nothing. I got comfortable, I stepped outside my pants. Fuck it, we in here, right? <laughs> you ever be shitting so good, you lean back on the top of the toilet, you know. I've never been so confident in shitting in a party, right? 10 minutes go by, I get up, I flush the toilet, wash my hands, I swing the door open, it's a line of people. I'm like, come on, get in here, it's all y'all. Come on, come on, come on, come on. The guy walked in behind me, he took about five steps as I'm walking away, I hear him go, what the fuck? I rush back in the bathroom, like, hey man, what's going on? I don't smell nothing, what you talking about? He points at the toilet, and it is the most shit stains I had ever seen in my life. It looked like the shit was holding on to the side of the toilet, going down, no! 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 We just got here! I had 
the thing fast. I was like, hey man, I don't know what that's about. I was in here doing cocaine off the sink and I got the fuck. This commercial came on for like sleep number beds or Ambien or justifiable homicide. <laughs> Something where the guy was just snoring like crazy. Uh, and I said, that sounds like you. And he just immediately said, will you fart in your sleep? <laughs> Which I feel like is the best insult ever because I have no idea. <laughs> so now I have to buy a tape recorder to figure out like if he's fucking with me or if my sleep flatulence is the real reason I'm single. So, <laughs> I guess to be continued on that one. By the end of it, like I like it felt like I like swallowed a water wing. Like I was like I was very buoyant by the time that like it was time for me to go. Like I. It, I le and I left without many words. Like I couldn't really talk. Like any hole I any hole I opened, I would just like fart out of it. You know. I, so I left her house and I got on a red line, um, which you know we all live here for the most part. Like that's a smelly train. Like that's a that is a great train to practice farting in. You know. Like, so I was like, I'm gonna. I've been waiting for this. I I earned this. Like let loose, butthole. And. Uh, I, I, did, I did that thing where you like fart like the most you can fart. You guys, you guys know that one? Like we really like, we really like follow through on the fart. Like you split the fucking uprights, like field goal. <laughs> like I got extra credit that I didn't do. You know, like I shit my fucking pants. Like right there on the train, standing too. I was standing up uh, and I wish I could say like, like just a shart, but like full, full blown dookie. Like I, I loaded my pants like I was wearing Depends, you know? Like, and I accidentally made eye contact with this lady, so like, she knew, she knew immediately. Like, she probably would have known, like, she was a veteran, like, she was a veteran of life, you know? Like, she was an elderly lady, you know? Like, she, she'd seen generations of men shit, is what I'm trying to say. Like, she saw that and she's like, oh yeah, you've just shit your pants, you know? Hey, it's a good, healthy shit you got in your pants. She, she wasn't Australian, but she, she was tough enough to be, you know? Like, so I couldn't take this Australian's gaze any longer. Uh, so, so I got off the train and I ordered an Uber, uh, which, yeah, polite audience, pretty rude thing to do in retrospect. Like, we, and as soon as Paul, like, in his beautiful Corolla pulled up, I, I, can, I canceled it, you know? Like, which is, my mom raised me better than that. But, like, like we've, and we've all canceled an Uber before, but has anyone ever done it without, like, looking at Paul, you know? Like, the Uber pulled up and I was just like, I'm sorry, Paul, I'm like, carded in boo, I can't get in there. Your Corolla's immaculate, like. <laughs> so finally I just got on a, a Chicago City bus, because, Turns out that's where I belonged the whole time. Uh, they're like, you sir smell of poo, welcome aboard. Like, you'll find in the back, there are three or more of your companions back there. Like, they're coated in it, you guys can share. Like, <laughs> two and three men have poo somewhere on them in a Chicago city bus. I think the, um, the thesis of that story, because uh, as you guys, have, we've been hanging out for a little bit, I tell pretty smart jokes, they all have theses. Uh, <laughs> You guys are like, no, you talked about llamas earlier. Uh, <laughs> the thesis of that joke is that um, farts are the screams of trapped poo. So just listen to your body. And while I, and let, let me tell you this. If your plan to get a woman is by sending her a picture, if that's how you want to get her attention, don't send her a picture of your penis. Send her a picture of fries. Yes. Women fucking, you hear that? Women fucking love fries! Oh my god, have you seen women when fries come to the table at a restaurant? They lose their shit, like, oh my god, fries! Why are you acting surprised? You just ordered them. Oh my god, fries, women are, women, women are on a diet. You wanna share some fries? Women will only have a salad. I'm just gonna have a salad, but will you split some fries with me? Like, like women, I'm hungover, I can't eat anything, but I'll still have some fries. Women fucking love fries. Oh my God, women are like, yes, yeah, fries. They get so excited about fries. Curly fries, oh my God, curly fries. Truffle fries. Oh, fucking fries, they don't discriminate. Have you ever seen them that excited to see your dick? No, never. I, uh, I travel a lot for stand-up, I travel a lot. Recently I stayed in Hands Down, one of the worst hotels I've ever stayed at. I stayed at a Ramada. Has anyone ever stayed at a Ramada? Holy shit. I was at the Continental Breakfast. I watched a guest pour waffle batter into the toaster. 
He filled it all the way up. I saw him staring at me, so he saw me staring at him, so he stopped, maintained eye contact, and then he just topped it off. I was like, I have to talk to this man. So I went up to him and I said, excuse me, sir, what are you doing? And he goes, huh? Oh, I'm making French toast. And I was like, actually, that machine doesn't make French toast. And he goes, no, but it makes toast. Here's the thing, he's right, a toaster does make toast. So to a man pouring waffle batter into a fucking toaster, I had to be like, yeah, give it a shot, I don't know. If it works, I'll take a piece, I'm an idiot. I was hanging out with my uncle's friend the other day. You guys ever hang out with my uncle's friend? <laughs> he's one of these dudes who's a, he's a fun guy. He's just, uh, he's one of these guys who's just like, he's just overexcited about mediocre food, you know? Like we went to Denny's, you know? And he was like, the whole time he was like, this is excellent. <laughs> what do you call it? Like, I don't know, that's uh, Moons Over My Hammy or something? <laughs> It's really cool. It's excellent. This is excellent. What do you call it? Like, well, you're just uh, eating mayonnaise at this point. It's creamy. I was uh, trying to uh, learn to cook. Uh, people always say how easy it is to cook, but it is not any easier than not cooking. <laughs> oh, just get a really good virgin olive oil. <sighs> pile of milk duds, pile of nuts. Boop, beep, boop, beep. <laughs> no, just slice up just a couple of it. <sighs> Squeezy cheese on finger, can of wine. <laughs> 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 No, just preheat the ah! hot power bar from glove compartment. Ooh, doodly do, doodly do, doodly do. Ooh, fresh from the oven. Uh, I'm very concerned about uh, celebrity chef uh, Paula Dean uh, because her recipes are like a suicide note. <laughs> Y'all, we're gonna be making some sweet dreams of little balls of butter, Shelton and Crisco, fat back cracklings, blubber, suet, margarine, may, mayonnaise. Each day I wake to a fresh nightmare. The pain is, is too great. I'm gonna roll in some granulated sugar, powdered sugar, candy, candy cone, gummy snakes, mentos, cookies, some. <sighs> So nerds. Don't look for me. I've made a plan and I will follow through with it. <laughs> Gonna drizzle that some hot fudge, heavy cream, whipping cream, sour cream, ice cream, cake, batter, peanut butter. You know what my favorite food is? Fajitas. I love fajitas. Do you like fajitas? You ever get those? Yeah, you do, right? They're good. Because it's more than a meal. It's very exciting. When you order a fajita, you order them, and then a couple minutes later, they bring them out, and it is loud. <laughs> Smoke. It's like 4th of July. Everyone's like, oh my god. What is that? What the fuck is that? <laughs> Big trail of smoke. Who got that? Who got that? That is an exciting meal. It's all over the place. Then they bring you the rest of the shit. Then it turns into an arts and crafts project. Another level of excitement. Tortillas, you have all these little sour cream, guac, salsa, you're just adding stuff. Glitter, whatever the fuck they bring out. You're gluing shit on it. Very exciting. Then it turns into 4th of July again when it explodes out of your asshole like an hour later. Hey, uh, real quick, anybody ever call in sick to work because you ate too much at breakfast? <laughs> no. 
I'm the weirdo. All right. Your excuse should never include the word bacon. That's all. Your boss don't want to hear that. I, uh, myself, I'm a pretty adventurous eater. You don't get this physique without taking a few chances. Uh, I will eat anything. Just try me. Uh, used to, not so much. I was a vegetarian for the past three years until recently. That's not a joke. I know it looks like a joke. Yeah, I'm aware. Fat vegetarian. Good job, idiot. They, uh, they kicked me out of the club. They're like, dude, this is bad PR. They, they didn't need me wandering the streets. Go veg! I did. <laughs> I didn't read the pamphlet properly. I don't know what happened. I, uh, I tried it because I thought I could lose some weight, and for three years I ate nothing but rice and tofu and veggies and cupcakes and donuts and fried pies and <laughs> fried cheese and cream cheese and mayonnaise sandwiches. and I couldn't lose any weight, guys. It's a stupid diet. I don't recommend it. I, uh, I gave all that up, though. I'm back on the meat train. I'm a born-again carnivore. Yeah. Now I'm eating meat with a vengeance. Just honey-baked hams, live rabbits, whatever. Just put it in my face and back off. I'm in my rotisserie chicken phase right now. Nothing more satisfying than sitting down eating a whole chicken. I don't know if you've tried that. Look into it. Pretty exhilarating. Uh, very productive way to eat. You sit down and eat a whole chicken, even if you do nothing else for the rest of the day. You're like, shit, I ate a whole chicken. I'm done. <laughs> Clocking out. Call it a day. How many chickens do you eat? Shut up. I'm doing something. I do this weird thing now. I don't know why I do it, but when I'm done with the chicken, I don't take the bones and put them in the trash. I'll gather up the bones and throw them out in my backyard. It was like, get out of here, chicken. Get out there where you belong. I don't know why I do it. I think it's like a weird subliminal warning to any nearby animals. Just to let them know what I'm capable of. Now you guys see what happened over here? All right, Squirrel, I'm watching you. The problem is, um, you know, it's like all I really do is go around the country, tell dick jokes, drink Crown Royal, hang out with nice people like you. Or I stay home, get high, and eat ice cream. Yeah, but now my wife has replaced ice cream with yogurt. Fucking yogurt. She's like, you can put berries in it. You can put bananas in it. I'm like, can I put Crown Royal in it? Because I'm high and it still tastes like shit. Can't go out for a good meal anymore. Always go, used to go out for steak or Italian. Now my wife takes me to Thai food. I don't like Thai food. I don't trust any food from a country full of skinny people. That's why they pray to a fat God. Because they're still fucking hungry. It's like, dear Buddha, can I please have a double bacon cheeseburger? I'm so sick of bamboo shoots and water chestnuts and seaweed that tastes like fish piss. I like buffets. You guys like buffets? I, I, I just recently lost 40 pounds. Yeah. Yeah. That's hard for a Farley. Good news is I saw my dick for the first time. Hey. Bad news is it's only this big. But I, uh, I, uh, I, I got fat on buffets, you know, buffets. I started eating buffets. And uh, it was because when I grew up, my dad used to, like, take buffets really serious. It was kind of like, uh, like a football game for him, you know. He'd get us. We had a big family, big Irish family, and he'd gather us in the lobby, you know. He'd be like, get in here. Here's how we're working this shit. <laughs> He's like, I'm not fucking around. This is $39.95. <laughs> He's like, bread and water. That's a waste of time. I don't want to see anybody eating bread. And water's only be used if you're choking. <laughs> He'd be like, all this green shit over here, the beets and the celery and the carrots, that's not why we're here. Let's focus. Sugars, fats, and beef. <laughs> you want the turkey, you want the ham, you want the roast beef. If you don't get it, you start bawling your eyes out and they'll cover it up for you. Most important thing is desserts. You fill your plate with everything single dessert they have. If somebody gives you shit, you say it's for the table. Yeah, at the end of it all, I'm gonna fake a heart attack, grab the chef by the throat, you guys fill your pockets with food, meet me in the lobby. Ready? <laughs> food is love, Brent. My wife's great though, she takes care of us. She's the smart one, she makes sure we eat healthy, you know, which is totally annoying. <laughs> I haven't had white bread in like six years. 
What the hell? What's wrong with white bread? I didn't know there was anything wrong with white bread. I grew up eating white bread. Now all we have in our house is that brown whole grain oat wheat shit with peanuts and acorns sticking out the side of it. <laughs> what the hell is that? She buys like chi it's chia seed flax weed or something. I don't know. It looks like it has fleas. The loaf of bread looks like it has fleas. It's frustrating. I'll try to make a sandwich. I'm like, oh, that's right. I forgot all we have is that loaf of trail mix. Okay, I gotta. I I'm gonna have cereal for lunch. Till I open up the fridge and see something like, you know, I don't know, cage free almond milk or some weird shit. It's either soy or almond. I don't even know. What the hell. It's, fr it's very frustrating for me, you know, because other married guys, they gotta sneak out of their house to eat donuts, you know? I gotta sneak out of my house to drink 2%. <laughs> what the hell is that? I'm like hiding in the car. Oh yeah, these cows were not treated humanely. <laughs> I ate at a diner this week because things are going well. And uh, if you have the money, you should treat yourself. You know what I mean? Diners are my favorite restaurants because they have everything you could ever want, no matter what. You know what I mean? Diner, rest diner menus have like 180 items on the menu and they're all ready immediately, which is not how food works. <laughs> Diners are the only restaurants that have lobster and pancakes on the same page of a menu. And even if they get your order wrong, the right one is still ready. They're like, here's your pancakes. You're like, I ordered lobster. They're like, oh, sorry. Here's your lobster. And you're like, I don't want that lobster. That was in your apron. Like women, you know how you take a picture when you're out in, you know, at the club or at, after the comedy show, you take a picture with your girls and then you gotta like, look at the picture before you post it. Like, let me see what I look like in that shit. You know what I mean? Like, I do that now. Like, I take a picture because I'm so conscious about my stomach now. Like, I take pictures. I'm like, let me see that shit real quick. Nah, bro, let me suck in my gut. Take another one, right? So, like, I'm, I'm for real, like, it fucks with me now. I hate people tag me. I'm like, dude, what's up with that stomach? I got to work on that shit, right? Like, I was at my cousin's birthday party last month. These dudes are gangbangers. We're taking pictures. These motherfuckers throw up gang signs and shit. I'm on the, I'm on the side like a chick sucking in my stomach like this. <laughs> Hurry up and take the picture, bro. And I was like, let me see what I look like in this shit. Yeah, that was crazy. It's fucking gut, man. And that's the thing, man. Like, when you get older, you know, simple shit will kill you. Simple food will kill you, man. Like, did you know when you get over 35, a glass of milk will fuck you up for two weeks? <laughs> Just regular milk. The red cap, the whole milk. Now I know why people don't drink that shit, man. Like, for real. I drank a big glass of milk the other night. Fell asleep like a fucking baby. For real. I fell asleep like, I just had my lechita. <laughs> Man, the next morning I woke up, I was bloated. For real. My stomach was out the here. My back was hurting. I was gassy. I was farting all over the house and shit. I was cramping up. I was freaking out. I'm like, am I having my period right now? What the fuck is happening? I got a 14-year-old daughter. I was asking her, I'm like, you get that? You get that? Yep, I got my period right now. <laughs> I'm like, when you get yours? On the 21st? Cool, mine's on the 23rd. Shit. I like that. I like that voice a lot, like marijuana, not even once. Or like ESPN was brought to you by deodorant. You know, like I... <laughs> I like doing that voice. That's fun for me. It feels kind of good on the throat. I think that guy, I think that guy has a shitty fucking life. Like, could you, could you imagine, like, you work at a pizza place and you pick up the line, you're like, hello, Papa Ray's, and on the other line you hear like a, hello. I would like a meat lover's pizza. You'd just be like, <laughs> fucking kids are terrifying. And he'd just be at home like, I'm so hungry. <laughs> Too many commercials when you watch football. Too many commercials. You watch, you watch commercials, there's always athletes and in shape people doing food commercials. Yes. It's not true, you guys. They don't eat that shit. I eat that shit. <laughs> I was watching TV, there was a Pizza Hut Family Pack commercial. Nine of the most attractive people you have ever seen in your life. There wasn't one fat fuck in the entire commercial. It's just all these models going, new from Pizza Hut. Pizza Hut's family pack. Get whatever you want on it and share it with your family. What is that? 
The commercial should not be that. The commercial should be like me on a couch going, uh, new from Pizza Hut. Pizza Hut's family pack. Let's be honest. I'm probably gonna eat the whole thing. I'm probably gonna... I might save a couple pieces for when I wake up, I'll have something, but. <laughs> Click the underneath, don't think about it. I don't know, I, I, I don't know. I feel, I've been feeling better about myself. Uh, as of March uh, 1st, I've lost a little over 110 pounds. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, here's the fun part, Laugh Factory. I'm still fucking fat. Like, what the fuck do you have to do? Normally, when you lose a ninth grader off your body, you'd feel a scotch bit better about yourself. It was getting bad, man. I was getting big. I had to worry about diabetes. You gotta worry about diabetes. Di that disease does not fuck around. Diabetes is like the mob. If you fuck up, they're gonna take your foot one toe at a time. It was getting bad, man. I was over 400 pounds. I was like a, I was like a couple sandwiches away from having my own show on TLC. TLC. I was one big Thanksgiving dinner away from shitting in bathtubs the rest of my life. Okay, it was code red. I know. I know. I, uh, I found out I was the fat guy uh, when I got on a plane on, in March, and I realized that I was uh, that fat fuck that nobody wants to sit next to on a flight. Here's when you figure that out, while you're lumbering down the aisle, trying to find your seat, and you're going, what's that? Gee, what's that? What's that? The look of panic on people's faces. <laughs> like when they thought I was gonna sit next to them, there's, ah, uh, fuck. He's so sweaty, why is he so sweaty? I sat in the middle seat. Uh, I just looked at those people, I was like, guys, I'm sorry, I'm gonna fuck up this flight for both of you. Um, I'm hungover, I got diarrhea, I'm gonna be up and down. Up and down. I'm trying to lose some weight. That's why I've been watching a lot of workout porn. And workout porn basically is just two people fucking in a, on a bench press, okay? That's all it is. I watch this one guy, this guy picks up this girl in midair, and he starts like repping her out in midair, like, I want, I want you, I want I'm like, holy shit. I start thinking back to some of the girls I brought home in my life. Like, if I was to even try to attempt that, it would be an event at the World's Strongest Man competition. <laughs> and we're here at the 2017 World's Strongest Man competition. That first thing is Russ Williamson. Russ's first lift will be Natalie. <laughs> Here's a fun fact about Natalie. Natalie had an entire Pizza Hut family pack for today's competition. <laughs> So she is locked, stocked, and ready to go. Yeah. Russ Williamson, first lift. That's real. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he did it! Let's go to the sidelines and talk to Russ. Russ, how'd you do it? Fuck <laughs> you! Can't fuck box jello. Cold, takes four hours to set. <laughs> By the time it's ready, you're not even hard anymore. It's a logistical nightmare. Anyway. So I'm fucking this pizza, right? <laughs> yeah, Friday night's a pizza fucking crowd, I dig it. 
I love that joke because I can look out in the audience and see every dude in the crowd going, I wonder what kind of pizza it was. <laughs> Bet it was a pepperoni pizza. That's what I'd fuck. I'd fuck pepperoni. Maybe I'm just old school, man. I like classic cars, vinyl records. Fuck pepperoni pizzas. These kids today, they'll fuck anything. Pineapple pizza, they're putting their dicks in hot pockets. Not me, man. Pepperoni, every time. Maybe stuffed crust, but only if I'm drunk. <laughs> One of the dumbest jokes I've ever read in my life. <laughs> I'm, in, I'm in a relationship as well. Um, it's, uh, it's nice to be in a relationship. I wasn't sure it was gonna happen for a very long time. Uh, and he's a nice guy, but we're not perfect. You know, we've been dating four years and we're in our 30s and not married, so. <laughs> yeah, I'm pissed. Um, <laughs> what the fuck, dude? I've put in my goddamn time, do you know what I mean? Because <laughs> at this point, I don't even think he realizes how easy it would be. You know, like he doesn't even have to give me a diamond. He could give me a piece of salami. I'll react the same way. <laughs> <laughs> just head sprout. <laughs> just bite his dick off. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I need that. I need that. I need that. That's mine. <laughs> and he's a nice guy. I'm not used to dating nice guys. I'm sure we've all dated a Raider fan or two. You know what I mean? <laughs> just real pieces of trash. Guys, where you look at them, you're like, no, no, no. You don't even need to take off your shirt. I know you have a Yosemite Sam tattoo on your chest. So. I know that. <laughs> but he's a nice guy. And I dated such terrible people, I haven't been able to like entire things after them. You know, like I dated a guy that cheated on me with a girl from Oregon, so guess who's never going to Oregon? <laughs> no, that's where the whores live. Um, <laughs> just call it Horrigan. Save me a joke. What are you doing? Thank you, solo clapper. <laughs> I don't know if you like me, you're like, mm, this is the one I'm killing tonight. Are you from Oregon? Are you a fat troll named Lori? Just kidding, I'm over it. You guys are moms. <laughs> fat troll, tattoo, get out of here, fuck you. Uh... This is my impression of a DJ ordering pizza. <laughs> yeah, hey, could I get a large pepperoni pizza, please, with, with, um, Dipping sticks and extra sauce for the sticks, please. Yeah, and yeah, and for my sauce, I want uh, I want nebra nebra. <laughs> yeah, just an extra set of nebra nebra. <laughs> yeah, nebra nebra. Yeah, exercise on my banana. Yeah, my banana. Yeah, exercise on my banana. Oh, 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 my banana. Step back from that ledge, my friend. <laughs> you could cut fries with all the like lines if you pin your in. And hence, if you do not want to see me a twin, I would under. How many breadsticks come in order, actually? <laughs> oh, thank you very much.